Okay, we're gonna do. Uh, whoa, that's loud. Why is it so loud today? Am I loud? Test one, two. We're gonna do things a little differently today. Uh, as you know, uh, I'm, I'm bored of this stuff. I really am. So I need my dopamine raised. But we're gonna do this in a certain way. What time is it? It's 11.22 a.m. my time. I'm gonna to go to 11.45. And uh, if no callers call in by 11.45 my time, 15 at eight, that's 22 minutes from now, I'm gone. And, uh, but to make it a little fairer, I will also allow atheists to call in who have over 1,000 subs. They're a YouTube creator, over 1,000 subs. You can call in, or theists can call in. And I'm going to be leaving at 11.45 if no theists call in. That's rule number one. And what I want to talk about with uh, atheist YouTubers who call in is uh, if you're bored of it, you have to be if you've been doing this for a while, right? I want to know why do you still do it? So that's why I want atheists to call in. Oh, and another announcement is um, if anybody has, hey, skeptics and scoundrels, you can call in. You've got over a thousand subs. In fact, I want you to call in. Can you call in? Let me uh, get the link out. I want to ask you something. And if anybody has connections with the uh, YouTube channel, The Line, is it The Line? Uh, I will go on that show today if they invite me, but I have to be invited. I'm not going to wait around like a high school girl waiting for a boy to call. No. Nope. Well, I guess it is waiting for a boy to call. <laughs> they got to call me. That's what I mean. Uh, but here's the link, scoundrels. Pin message. So if you're a theist, you can call in. You get first priority. If you're an atheist with, with over 1,000 subs, you can call in. I will not be answering any questions from the live stream chat unless you donate. Because as the Joker said, if you're good at something, never do it for free. That just lets you know how bored I am about this stuff. Uh, let's see here. I need to increase the brightness a bit. Can you call in scoundrels or no? I'm too good to wait on hold. Exactly right. Okay, I'll give you a few minutes, skeptics and scoundrels. If they really want me, they will invite me. Or if they just want to talk to the choir, people who always agree with them, then they have that right too. See, I'm the opposite. I, I, I really don't like talking to people who agree with me on everything or on most things. Yes, it's a trade. Oh, uh, while we're waiting for scoundrels to call in, <laughs> what a name. Um, one of my favorite Jews. By the way, for those of you who don't know, I love, I absolutely love the Jews. And you can't say that's racist because, hang on, because it has the word love in the sentence. <laughs> Uh, Robert Price was uh, on that show. Uh, thank you, Oflamio. You know what? Oflamio donated two dollars, so I'm going to add two minutes. I'm going to wait till eleven forty-seven now for Atheist to call in. Uh, he's my favorite Jew, and he's my favorite mythicist. There's only two mythicists in the world. No, there's a lot. By the way, let me say this. 
for all those people out there who poo poo the mythicists, I, I think that's bad. Like, they very well could be right, and they have good reasons to be very skeptical that Jesus, the man, even existed. May I remind you all that there is zero, zero, zero contemporary evidence for the life and ministry of Jesus. What contemporary means, nothing written while Jesus was alive. In fact, even a decade after he was alive. We have zero, zero evidence of the life of Jesus. Now, you can say that about other people in history. And people do doubt that certain people in history even existed, like Socrates, for example. So don't poo-poo the mythicists. And uh, let me uh, chastise people like Bart Ehrman, who says that anybody who says that Jesus didn't exist is uh, crazy or whatever, however he phrases it. Bart Ehrman, you're a historian. If you say that you're 100% sure, 100% sure that Jesus existed as a man, I doubt you as your credentials as a historian, because historians don't talk like that. It's all probabilities. I hope Bart Ehrman hears this someday because he knows what I said is true. He knows it, he knows it, he knows it. He can say 99.9, but Bart, I think I've heard you say 100 before. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, and then I'll take it back. So don't poo-poo the mythicists. In fact, I, am, I will admit I cannot defend the existence of Jesus the man in history other than a guy named Paul said he had a brother. That's the closest I can get. And that my intuitions say that it's more likely there was a real figure the whole Christian story was based on rather than it just being purely made up. That's all I have, and I admit it. I admit this to the mythicists. I can't really defend it other than that. But mythicists, you've got to admit that for the non-Christian, for the atheist, really, who cares if Jesus existed or not? <laughs> like from our point of view, it really does not matter. And the only reason why I think mythicists bring this up, that Jesus never existed, is it's probably the clearest way to denounce Christianity. Because if Jesus never existed, then Christianity is the whole thing. Everything's based on a lie. I would say 80-90% of it's based on a lie. But you would say, well, it's very easy. 100% lie. You're a mythicist, Oflamio. Yeah, I, I don't poo-poo the myth mythicists. Not at all. I just think you're maybe going about it the wrong way. Because no theist is going to um, take you seriously, I guess. And maybe this is why Bart Ehrman is so adamant to saying Jesus existed. In fact, I asked um, Dr. Dennis R. MacDonald the probability that Jesus existed. And he only put it at 80%. He's not a mythicist, but he, he's a good historian. He says 80%. Only Christianity can take you to an empty tomb. The only reason why you believe there's an empty tomb is because an old text says so that was written decades after the fact. That's it. This is why I'm bored of all this. Any, any Christian who brings up empty tomb, like, we, we talked about this to death. How are you doing today? Doing pretty good. Let me, uh, Let me get you over and on my teleprompter so I can look at you. While I'm talking, teleprompter. You need me. <laughs> you need there me to go. say things in order to know what you for you to say. <laughs> no, no. Well, I have a teleprompter tray with like its own LCD screen in there, and I can pipe my video conference video to it, so I can look at you while looking at the camera. 
It's kind of like a uh, setup I got there. I see. Yeah, so I always yeah. look to the side. Yeah, I, I do that too when I'm like having to read something or I'm like reading comments. But when I'm talking to somebody, I like looking at them because, you know, it's part of communication, you visual cues and all that. So, yeah, I, I'm Canadian and I'm a bit of a stoic. Um, and so I don't like uh, looking people in the eye. No, yeah. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me very you, uncomfortable. And don't hug me, whatever you do. You must really love COVID then. He's like, I don't have to be around anybody. I can just talk into a screen and they talk back and yeah. Now you have a fairly new channel, right? Yeah, it's only about six months old. Um, I kind of stumbled ass backwards into some subscribership. So um, yeah, it's a pretty young channel relative to how many subscribers I got. I got about 5,500 right now. Oh, that's yeah. After about that's good. Uh, after about six months, yeah. Uh, you're doing and actually you're doing better than me. I actually, yeah, <laughs> well, no, you, you got more than I do. I think no, but in six months I didn't have that. Yeah, my my rate of growth has dropped off pretty substantially. So you know um, why? I actually, have to because I'm probably not putting much work into it. No, right now. <laughs> no I can tell you why. because you like me. Nah. I don't like you. I tolerate you. <laughs> there you go. Now your your subs are going to bump up. You're learning quickly. Uh, no, I, I like you just fine. You're um, um, uh, so you're not bored of talking about Christianity yet, then? No, I'm just getting started. Um, so no, not not yet. Uh, I'm I'm still trying to figure out like the kind of the focus of my channel because I've I've kind of gone a, like a little bit left, a little bit right, not politically, just just trying everything till I kind of find like a, a niche or a, a pattern that I like to establish. Um, so yeah, like right now I got I'm working on a new video for my uh, things I wish I knew when I deconverted series, which is just just your basic like 101 stuff. Like here's what falsification is, here's what deconversion deconstruction is, and all that. So it's kind of what I'm focusing on it right now. So you, and then every once in a while, so you I'll latch on. I, I was a Jehovah's Witness. Oh know, yeah, that's right. If you can call, if you can call that Christian, some people say that those aren't Christians. But well, it's a yeah, it's a Christian sect. It's, I think they were. Yeah, it's a cult of a cult. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah, it's like an offshoot of the Seventh Day Adventists. Um, yeah, I, I very much consider witnesses to be a cult. Uh, I'm going to probably do a whole series on that based on Stephen Hassan's the Bite model and how the witnesses fit. You know that that pattern. Where do you think your um, uh, Christian knowledge is at? Let's say 100% is the most knowledgeable Christian historically, theologically, whatever. Oh man, I'm I'm definitely lower percentile. Uh, let's let's let, put it in perspective. I didn't know what Calvinism was until I started watching your channel back in like August. Oh wow. Yeah, witnesses are very ignorant about other Christian denominations because hey, why learn about them? Because we have the truth. We're God's one and only true organization. So why why learn about all these other denominations they're all false religion anyway so yeah that was kind of the perspective they had and i've been i've been an atheist now for 14 years um it wasn't until last year i started learning a bit more about this stuff a few years ago started watching more apologia started learning more about bible history learned who bart Ehrman was learned who you know uh, dale allison was started learning you know what scholars are actually saying about bible history and then like i said back in august ish i Discovered your channel, started watching you, and I learned what Calvinism was, learned more what street epistemology was, and now I'm just kind of taking it from there. So in one sentence, why did you leave Jehovah Witnesses? One sentence. In one sentence. Uh, I inadvertently socially isolated myself, and the cult think wore off because I was no longer around that reinforcement. So I, I lucked out of it. I didn't get out because I was smarter or... I wised up or anything. I just kind of lucked my way out of it. And uh, now I'm learning more about why I left. I, yeah. Mm. So you can say, you can say I'm, I deconstructed after I deconverted. I'm probably in the process of deconstructing still, even though I deconverted first. Yeah. I think that's the yeah. case for most people. I think that's yeah. re the reason why a lot of people watch my channel. They try to justify why they left. Yeah. I think that it does scratch an itch watching atheist content because you're, you're learning more about yourself as you're this is part of the reason why i don't people. like atheist channels oh yeah like in one sentence why don't you like atheist channels like like put those two together because what it should be doing is causing doubt in christians or other believers other religions but what it's actually doing in i'd say 80 percent of the cases is providing a justification for people who need it want it 
who have already left. Yeah, I can I can agree with that. Yeah, yeah. And to me, think, that's uh, kind of I wouldn't say it's bad, but it's it feels a little icky. Like they yeah. should have done it themselves and should have good reasons to have left in the first place. I I agree. Ideally, that would be preferred. Everyone should leave for rational, logical, well thought out reasons. Yeah. Um. I think though, like in my case, at least Jehovah's Witnesses don't go to college, don't study philosophy, don't look at higher education. Um. Just, and I was born into it. I didn't join right because I wanted to. I was just having me born in the religion, so I wasn't given any of those tools as I grew up. So I had no choice but to leave for emotional reasons or just to leave on just instinct and intuition. Like I didn't have the tools yeah. I needed to. And that's normal, I guess. Out. Like like even I, being dead inside and more of a stoic, left for yeah. prideful reasons because I wanted to figure out why other people don't believe what I believe. And I was trying to figure it out. Like I was yeah. more of a challenge. And yeah. um but um, I heard you the other day on Nitty's channels saying uh, that you agreed with me that people should be a little more dead inside. Yeah, I, I do like that. I do like that saying. Um, I think I definitely think emotional attachment to an ideology can definitely cloud your judgment. Yeah. When you're trying to analyze it, yeah, absolutely, you should put it aside. Is that a shepherd? Is that a shepherd bark? That's my corgi. Oh. He's a. Yeah. <laughs> a kind cor of a, he's a shepherd. The corgi is. Oh, is it's a big dog. Uh, he's a bigger version of a corgi than normal. Okay, I can get him over here to show him to you if you want. No, that's all right. I I don't want to get cheap yeah. views. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I also heard you say that I'm problematic. Yeah. Uh, now so now say, you don't wish you wouldn't have hopped on, right? <laughs> no, no. Actually, I I was thinking about that when you invited me on. I was like, I wonder if you heard me on the other night. Uh, <laughs> when I say problematic, I mean you know you you're right leaning, and that's kind of against the grain when it comes to you know your typical non-believer atheist. So I know a lot of people, they don't like that. They want alignment on political ideology or else they aren't like fully on board. Is that a problem? Um, not for me, no. I know for some other people. Okay. You said, I mean, you said it yourself. I think I think several weeks ago, I made a comment on your channel and you said, oh, hey, skeptics and scoundrels. Um, uh, you said something like 51% uh, of atheists don't like me. Um, so it's probably you, higher. Yeah, but that's what you said to me on on a chat, and yeah. so I was like, "Yeah, I know." Doug Doug understands that probably, even if it's a slim majority, probably majority of atheists maybe not don't don't view you favorably because of your political leanings. I'm not hung up on that. As far as I know, you haven't said anything that's like super out there for me, at least, where I go, "Oh, I don't want to," you know, listen to this guy. So yeah, no, um, yeah. Do you? That wasn't me. Do you, that wasn't me making a dig at you or anything. Yeah, like yeah, that. I understand. Um, do yeah. you? Um, are you careful with what you say on your channel so you don't go against uh, the, the grain? Yeah, so part of me, yeah, I would, I would, I would be lying if I said I didn't. Um, I'm keeping my channel, for the most part, apolitical. Um, but witnesses don't vote. They're apolitical. They, they, just, like, they just don't handle politics at all. So I grew up, I left when I was in my you know, late 20s. I didn't develop that political muscle and I'm still developing it now. So I'm very inept and very clumsy when it comes to my political expressions. Um, so for the most part, I usually avoid talking about it in public. I'll talk about it in private with like family and friends and stuff like that. But yeah. for the most part, I don't want to talk about it in public because I'm I'm probably going to say something wrong. I'm going to word something incorrectly. And then people kind of jump on that and get all over that. And I don't, my guess, that's not really focused on my channel. So. You know, my guess is a lot of uh, atheist content creators, some of them who are big probably have a some right leanings and and if they were to let that out like a big chunk of their subscriber base would fall off potentially yeah i would imagine yeah depends because it depends on what they say stuff like that because i mean i'm not i'm not strictly left um i'm definitely progressive more liberal but i can see I can see positions and ideology on the other side that I would maybe agree with in certain areas. I guess it depends on how you break down conservatism, how you break down right leaning. Like there's the social aspect of it, there's a political aspect of it, there's a financial aspect of it. You know, kind of break it down and kind of look at it more granularly um, instead of just looking at it as a complete whole. Um, so yeah, uh, but for the most part, I don't like I don't like getting those those things getting in my way when I'm listening to somebody because I listen to your channel because I like the street epistemology and I like the discussions around religion. So that's that's what I come here for. Um, so yeah, I don't let little hangups like that get in the way or anything like that. 
Okay, well, I got five minutes left for Theus to call in, so um, you have any? You have a question for me? Uh, nothing I haven't asked you in chat before. Um, I'm I got like I said, it's because of you. I'm into street epistemology. Um, listening to your channel, listening to you converse to others. I have a book right here. Peter Bogosian, Manual of Creating Atheists, yeah. um, on street epistemology. I've heard so about I'm it. Working, <laughs> yeah, working through this. Yeah, I, was kind of, cause I asked you one time, I was like, uh, well, what resources do you recommend for learning street epistemology? And you just said practice. So yeah, um, I am trying to do that. That's actually part of why. And Anthony uh, Mang Bosco's videos are great. Yeah, yeah, I got him. I'm subscribed to him and I'm starting to work through his content. Um, and yeah, uh, and I've also been appearing on the line um, with uh, Jimmy and Matt and stuff like that. Do so, you have connections you know, with the one show that's going to start soon? The line, uh, the um, trans, oh, the trans -like? Yeah, no, I don't. I'm I'm still fairly new over there, and I'm. I got to know Jimmy through a, a, another live stream, and so I'm been doing that because I'm trying to do what you recommended. I'm trying to practice. So whenever I appear on the line, I'm trying to practice root epistemology because it's kind of hard for me to get out here to talk to people, I need to find like some type of street epistemology group or some some uh, some group of people here that can kind of help me facilitate get out there and talking to people. So uh, yeah, so that's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm just trying to practice and reading up on it and just kind of honing honing the craft. Okay, well, good luck to you. Thanks for hopping on. Yeah, thanks, man. What's the name of your Thank channel you. again? Let's do a little plug for you. Yeah, my name, my channel's name is Skeptics and Scoundrels. It's about six months old. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Joe Ensley, the, the the gentleman pastor you talked to a couple weeks ago. I have to really thank my growth mainly from him because he appeared on Godless Engineer's channel. I super chatted him. He gave me an obscenely complicated answer to a very simple question. And I made a whole 25 minute video based off of that. Uh, and that's kind of where I got a bulk of my subscribership from because that video kind of hit it big. Like, yeah, I saw that over 100, 100 yeah. 100,000 K or 100,000 subscribers. Uh, views on it sorry uh yeah and so i got him to thank for it but yeah that's my channel skeptics, skeptics and scoundrels so i've been around for about six months now and i got more content coming soon okay all the best to you take care cool man later see ya okay uh, i said earlier uh i'm not gonna wait around forever theus needs to call in in three minutes no pressure we would be done already but oflamio donated uh two bucks to add two minutes <laughs> um yeah i was gonna watch this but he says uh toby said something some new things about paul that i hadn't heard before about paul not really being in jail and acts but more of a house arrest i thought that was interesting and that we really don't have any good evidence that paul was really uh martyred for his beliefs most of them we almost have no martyrdom stories in the in the bible theists can call in and talk about whatever they want can talk about what i just said we don't martyrdom is usually a huge one for theists to talk about but whatever you do you got one minute maybe two And then I'll move over to my political channels um, after this. Or you can add time by donating. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here for free. Five bucks gets you five minutes. If you each donate a a, a dollar, that you get two hundred and sixteen minutes of me waiting for Theus to call in. <laughs> Oh yeah, Andrew Tate was charged formally. Yeah, I got a political channel, David. It's called Pine Creek Politics. Last chance.
You guys thought I was joking. I'm not. Yeah, you can come to the political channel. We'll start probably in the next half hour. Just got donated five bucks, so I'll wait uh, five more minutes. 11.53 now to call in. <laughs> Paying for my time. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think of, of Christianity is... Uh, in its own right, does it have any like real theological status or, or do you consider it just a man-made religion? Of course, as you know, I, I consider all of them uh, that way, but uh, how is, is it, uh, is it good or bad? Is the, what do you think of these double covenant ideas, for instance, that Christian Christianity is a way of bringing uh, the Gentiles into the, the... This is one thing I don't like about Robert Price. Uh, it's like, when you ask a question, try to keep it shorter. The, most people have this problem. They ask compound questions. They become so convoluted. Just, what do you think about Christianity? Faith of the God of Israel, even though it may have some uh, odd pagan admixture. I'm just curious as to what you think about it. On every level, it's malevolent. Xavier. You made it just in time. You had four minutes left. Wow. We, we talked last I'll week, talk right? Within the 30 seconds. We did, we did. Okay. Oh. So you think, Happy Thursday. You, I think Paul was a shyster. I think the Apostle Paul was... Um, in it for the money. Wow. Yeah. Um, he didn't gain much money, according to him. Well, of course he's going to say that. That's I think, I think subconsciously he liked the power of authority, and the power and grandizement of having a resurrection body and reigning in the heavens. But I don't think it was on purpose. I think it was a sub subconscious thing. You think what was a subconscious thing? The his his the 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 dopamine he got from aggrandizement like a power oh like his authority over his churches and one day reigning in the heavens with jesus as a super apostle i think he was full of himself a little bit okay well this is interesting you're a christian and you're saying that paul was f maybe a little bit full of himself yeah yeah you realize paul is your only first-hand account witness of jesus yeah, but he said it himself. He said he needed the thorn in the flesh because he was getting full of himself. Okay. It makes sense. I don't, I don't see how there's, you know, it, that doesn't really disprove that he had an apparition. What's more likely that, that Paul just had maybe a, some type of vision of Jesus because he was persecuting them or whatever, or he had a, a friend who became a Christian or a relative, and that's why he became a Christian, or that he actually saw the risen Jesus um hmm. which is more likely more likely to... yeah wow uh okay if you ask me this like in church in a cathedral i would say obviously <laughs> he saw jesus but when i'm like out in the real world out in the secular world <laughs> um i would say no it, it's it's more likely he had a vision the natural like what why makes more sense why does it depend on your physical location how you answer because when i'm in a state of prayer or when i'm in church i get i enter into a different world my brain does something different and it works every time okay when you so w when you're in a certain mode you are more likely to believe things differently yes yeah like i go to adoration chapel with my wife we go to a catholic chapel catholic church 
an adoration chapel is when they have the host, the Eucharist, on a table. And when I'm there, I feel the real presence of Jesus. But like when I'm in a restaurant or at a bar, I see things differently when it comes to faith. When uh, it just works, do you think differently? Do you think that when uh, someone um, who's a follower of David Koresh is in his presence, they might believe differently when they're not? Do you know who David mm. Koresh is? I do, I do. The government burned all those people down to get rid of them. David Koresh was very charismatic, right? He was, he had yeah. people eating uh, out of the palm of his hand. Do you think he that had, he even married minors? Yeah, but uh, do you think that's good to allow yourself to get in these states of either meditation or just in awe of a charismatic leader or in awe of a certain environment? Do you think that helps you reason properly? I wouldn't say. Okay, if, if it's so, so that I think that's two different questions. I'll try to get both. Is it good and does it help me reason properly? Yeah. Um, it, I don't think it helps me reason properly in all aspects of life, like looking at everything psychology, logic, grammar, history, all of that. I think it just takes me, makes me focus on one aspect of reality, which is a spiritual aspect. But is it good? Um, I think. It's neutral. I think it can be good or bad, depending on the context. That's fair. Um, like, I have no, yeah. nothing against people who are spiritual, in quotes, if they're just doing it to help make themselves feel better. Um, yeah. But you're not doing it for that reason, right? You're not doing it just to feel better, are you? Um, it's, well, that's one reason, but it's not the sole reason. What's the sole reason? That you go that to what? church and you meditate and pray and what? I'm inclined strongly I'm in strong I'm inclined strongly even when I look at atheist arguments and I'm like wow this makes a lot of sense what you say makes a lot of sense it my body still is inclined towards that it's still searching after something higher something transcendent why do you think that is like it feels like it's I feel like it's real why do you think you need to search for something higher? Why do I? Why? <clears throat> because my body's trying to find meaning. You're trying to find meaning. Yeah, it's trying to find meaning. It's trying to find connection. Um, it's trying to make sense out of everything. I'm trying to be complete. And you don't think you could do that without this higher power idea? I don't see how we can't. Um, I've even looked for like secular arguments for the utility of religion. It's kind of just to, to, to follow, to just to feed my confirmation bias. And there is this person named Stephen Asma who wrote a book, I think it's called Why We Need, Why we Need Religion. And he, and, he, and he gives a purely secular argument. Yeah. Well, I think that's why, um, in my opinion, I think this is why religion evolved, why we still have it, why it always will per persist probably is because of this. Um, it basically comes down to fear of death, I think. Yeah. Terror management. Yep. Uh, and so even if it's not literally true, which at this point, I mean, after watching your videos and <laughs> uh, many other content, I'm like, I don't, I don't know how I can prove, I can't prove that this is true or not. I just, I just believe it. I can't really control it. How confident are you that a God exists? Let's say at a zero and a hundred. Hmm. Probably 10. 10%? Yeah. Wait a minute. You're ten percent confident a God exists. Ninety percent confident there is yeah. no God. Yeah. Xavier, that that means you don't really believe. I do. There's a part of me that 
I think I do. There's a part of me that says, okay, I just got to take it by faith. If I told my wife, if she asked me, husband, my dear husband, on a scale of zero to 100, how much do you love me? And I said, 10 percent she said you don't love me <laughs> <laughs> probably yeah you, but, okay. xavier you're an atheist i can't say that because i'll say it for you uh, no 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 i there could be a god i say that too i still think there could i i say that too it's not impossible unless it's a, a logically incompatible type god which i think the christian god is but i don't say that there can't be a god I wouldn't say 10%, I'd probably say 0.001% or something, but but basically, I think your confidence is so low that for you to be honest with yourself, you need to say you're an atheist. Otherwise, you're kind of lying. I still practice my faith. <clears throat> oh, that's a different thing. Like, I still... There's probably a lot of atheists who still go to church. They still practice some certain ritual, whatever, but they don't really believe it has anything to do with a real power out there. I hope there's a real power. See, my advice to you is... My advice to you is be honest with yourself. Say you're an atheist, but still go to church. Still get those good dopamine rushes that you get from the singing or whatever. It's fine. But don't, I, but don't come on was. my show and say you're a Christian because you're not. I'm a practicing Christian. Well, you're a cultural Christian. Let's put it that way. Well, well, hang on. Let's may, maybe I'm wrong. What's your confidence between zero and hundred that a man named Jesus, two thousand years ago, was God incarnate, died, and rose again on the third day for the sins of the world? Zero to hundred. I don't know how we could even know that. It has to be less than 10, because if your belief in God is at 10, this is something added on to it. It's probably the, it's probably the same. It, it's probably the same. Uh, confidence that there yeah. is a literal supernatural being that loves us. Yeah. Ex I still cling to religion. I cling on to this whole. Yeah, that's fine. I, hope, I wish it to be true. I hope it's true. You can wish it can be true. You hope it's true. You cling to it. But you're not a Christian. You're not even a theist. So sorry to tell you the truth. Wow. I can send you an Apple gift, Applebee's gift card if it will make you feel better. <laughs> your, your argument got to me. Um, <laughs> God wouldn't, you, you, it really did. It, you said God wouldn't make a world that allows for torture and sin if he was all powerful and all good. Yeah. And I, I had to agree to that um, and bite my tongue. But I'm still clinging to hope that there is a God. And maybe we're wrong. Maybe you and I are, there's, our logic is correct, but there's something more than logic. There's nothing wrong with that. Good. There's absolutely, in my opinion, nothing wrong to cling to hope. Uh, like, I, part of me hopes that there's extraterrestrial aliens from other planets far, far away on Earth here. I think that would be the coolest thing. But I don't believe it's true. I don't think there's insufficient evidence to believe it's true. But I can still have this hope. That's fine. But I encourage you to like not lie to yourself. Um, keep hoping. Keep be a cultural Christian. I mean, that's fine. Yeah, I like the Catholic Church. Um, I like what it stands for. They've really evolved throughout the years. I think it makes the world better. Honestly. Well, you gotta admit, like um, the more I learn about the Catholic Church, the more I don't care for it, <laughs> with the pedophiles and all that. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't like well, I, I don't like the whole idea of the history of um, <coughs> paying money so you can get your you get uh, your guilt taken away. You know, confessing to a priest. Yeah, they've had their mess ups. They've had their the word messed up. You know, so. And I don't get points. the whole the bread and the wine is the literal or the trans substa substantiation. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, to me, it's just... I mean, if you're going to be a Christian, happens, I would recommend just being some type of nebulous Christian if you don't really believe it anyhow. But but you're saying I'm not a real Christian. You're not a Christian, I, I Xavier. For sure. 
for sure that he exists. No, you don't then, need certainty. You don't need certainty, but if you're at ten percent, um, I don't think there's any any Christian listening right now who would call you a Christian. I told the priest this during confession that I, I don't think there is one. I don't think there is a God, but I'm trying to. I, I wish there was. I'm clinging on. I'm hoping he proves me wrong. Do you want to live forever in heaven? I do. Okay, that's part of the reason why you're at ten percent, is my guess, because of this need and a hope. priest. Yeah, a priest told me, yeah, you can come to church and not with, with these thoughts and these doubts, and it's faith. You, you're just accepting it by faith. But uh, ten percent is a low number. Yeah, like think about just keep telling yourself about that wife analogy. You're married, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. How, on a scale between zero and hundred, how much do you love your wife? A <laughs> hundred. Well, come on. Ninety-nine. There's days where she makes you furious, right? There are some nasty days, you know. Yeah. The monster comes So out, let's be so honest. Well. Ninety-nine, ninety-eight. But notice for your Lord and Savior, In the it's ten percent. <laughs> come on. <laughs> uh, yeah. What, can your wife promise you eternal salvation? No. Can your wife raise the dead? For, no. Forgive you of no, your no. sins? No. And yet you're at 10%. No, you're not a Christian, Xavier. You're not even a Catholic. And you're not even a theist. You're a hopeful atheist. And you're a cultural Christian. And there's nothing wrong with that. I, I would say all the best to you. Um, wow. Yeah. This is my graduation into atheism, though. And... Uh, <laughs> I'm happy to have been a part of your um, your evolution. Thank you. Thank you, Concrete. Have a great, great day. Goodbye. See ya. Wow. Good for you, Xavier. And thanks for the donation, Justin. You had five minutes to the clock. With the other donation, we're at nine minutes. So you, another theist has nine minutes to call in. That's uh, my time would be 12, 14, we'll say. And then I'm out of here. <laughs> the more I learn about the Catholic Church, the more I don't care for them. I use the Norm MacDonald line on the Catholics. Thanks, David. Oh, let's get back to um, what my favorite Jew thinks of Christianity. Went on every level. Uh, it's a, a terrible influence. Is there a religion that spilt more blood, that took the lives of more innocent people than the church? Uh, the, uh, isn't Islam close to Christianity and bloodshed? Bloodiest religious war in Europe. Well, okay, but the theists are going to say oh, the religion of atheism has shed more blood. Human history a war that probably triggered all the criticism of Christianity, uh, the Thirty Year War, 1618 to 1648, eight million people dead. No doubt Christianity is the author of the Holocaust without... Yeah, I would agree Christianity is the author of the Holocaust, but I would agree that Judaism is the author of Christianity. Oh, Toby Singer will not like to hear that, but it's true. The truth hurts. Christianity, the Shoah, uh, the m destruction of European Jewry during World War II would have not been possible because the it would have not been possible for the Germans to have sold the notion that Jews were untimension, subhuman, Without the Christian Bible, you know, we, we've been on here, Bob, so many times together, and we often talk about... I, I wonder how many Christians actually 
have thought about that and realized that. Like, I think when I was a young Christian, I didn't think about that, but it's true. Like, who did Hitler want to get off the planet? The people who killed Jesus. Contradictory texts in the Christian Bible where the New Testament doesn't even agree with itself. And, and I don't just mean that, um, it doesn't, that the stories contradict each other. That's plain. But theologically, the books contradict each other. Um, but there is something very consistent in the Christian Bible. And, and that is it's notoriously anti-Semitic. It's portrayal and caricature the way it characterizes the Jews, just most people, thank goodness, don't read the Christian Bible, because if they did, they yeah. Would... Just think about who did Jesus view as the most pathetic human being uh, on the planet? Um, that was the Pharisaical Jews, right? And I believe Tovia is a Pharisee. Uh, also, the Samaritan woman. Jesus basically called her a dog. I would say, you know, people accuse me of being a racist. I think Jesus was worse than me. It would be, God only knows what would have happened to us. We're all racist, by the way. We just got good racists and bad racists. The Christian Bible very consistently uh, has a, a villain, and that's the Jews. Uh, the, the character development is, is it's very well done. The um, the Jews at every stage are just plotting to destroy Christ, uh, starting from the infancy narrative. I don't, you know this, starting from the infancy narrative of Matthew. Um, Herod is looking to kill the kid for, uh, I can't say for no reason. He found out the king of the Jews was born in Bethlehem. And while Herod is looking to kill the kid, you have people from the east we don't know how many they are, but these people following the star, they're just looking to see. Like, <clears throat> when I was a Christian, you don't even give that a second thought. But now looking back, magi from the east following a star to worship um, this god that they really don't know anything about, whereas the Jews, the Romans out to kill Jesus, it just all may, seems so made up. Looking back at it, to worship the the newborn Savior and then l go back to wherever they came from through a circuitous route, so as not to jeopardize the kid. In every and then going to the passion narratives, the Jews. I mean, they're all on the same page. If you, What's more likely that whole killing of the children? in the New Testament actually happened in history, or it was a knockoff of the, um, the Moses story, right? You Christians watching us now want to talk about consistency. All the Gospels consistently characterize the Jews as completely responsible for Jesus' death, and Pontius Pilate is nothing more than a lackey. There is just an, a difference of temperature. John is amped up most, the f last gospel. Mark is, it's still a, a nightmare. But if, if, if John, Luke, and Matthew had never been written, it wouldn't be that bad. It's bad, but not, it's, they're all bad. So <laughs> on that level, it's a nightmare. And then Christianity spiritually brought a idolatry to the world. It, it it acted as a vehicle with which to transmit all the pagan mythologies. Well, not just that. Um, this is something, another thing Christians don't really get, that if Jesus isn't God in flesh and you worship him as God, do you realize how doomed you are? How bad that is to Yahweh? If Yahweh's real and Jesus is not Yahweh, and you are a Trinitarian Christian? I mean, you're breaking the most important commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength in the New Testament. But you're, love, you're not loving God. You're loving this man. 
You should not have any gods before me in the Old Testament. But you're worshiping, worshiping this man. I mean, you better be pretty, pretty sure that Jesus is God incarnate. Otherwise, I think you're in trouble if Yahweh exists. You know Yahweh is a little cranky at times, right? By the way, you got two minutes to call in or donate, and you can extend the time. But anyhow, uh, Tovi Singh is my favorite Jew. Rob Price is my favorite mythicist. So go check out Tovia Singer's channel if you want to listen to the rest of it. And I believe the room's open. Yep. You got one minute before I start the music. No, I'd, uh, I have Venmo, but uh, if you want to donate, you have to donate here, or you can donate on uh, the tip jar. I guess I can open that to see if there's any tips there. And then I'll extend the time. Because if you're good at something, never do it for free. You heard it, guy deconverted because of me. <laughs> okay. Probably wasn't just because of me. And I will probably be going to my uh, political channel where I won't have these time constraints. I think I have lots to say there. This you got till the music ends to call in. I'll stop the music if someone calls in. Pine Creek Politics is the name of my political channel. And if someone has connections to the show, The Line, or the Transatlantic, whatever, if they invite me, I'll go on there while I'm on my political channel. Uh, I can give you a link, make it easy. So if you pride yourself in being a person who just doesn't like to be in the choir and want to hear views other than what your tribe says, <laughs> I would call him a Pine Creek made me an atheist. Okay, time's up. My shortest stream in a long time, and it's still an hour, so wow. Thanks for the donations, thanks for hanging out. Uh, I'll be on my political channel probably in the next 20 minutes. Poof.